Good evening and welcome to the People's Platform. Our topic of discussion tonight is cracking down on the war on drugs. Uh, we are joined by Mr. Pubudu Sumanasekara, Executive Director of the Alcohol and Drug Information Centre or ADIC. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Sumanasekara, over the past few months, uh, we have seen uh, an extreme sensationalization across media platforms of drug use, drug abuse, specifically um, with the targeted uh, substrata of students, school-going children. Let's talk about, the firstly, the dangers of the sensationalization of drug use and to the problem itself. Yes, uh, unfortunately, as you said, uh, we are exposed to lots of different type of media news whether you read something in the newspaper or sometimes uh, you get uh, social media type of post and all and sometimes it may be electronic media so uh, the words they use to uh, describe the issue and sometimes the images even mm. and uh, at the same time even the facts and figures were mostly wrong so unfortunately what happened was that Maybe some people think that they are trying to do something good to the society by putting such a news like that. But we have to be very careful because these kind of news and kind of information is very sensitive to children and young people. As you correctly said, most of the news and uh, the kind of other uh, information circulated telling that the young children are taking this, this much of young people, uh, this much of students, particular school, particular area. Unfortunately, when you really check it, uh, the particular uh, drug uh, name, that chemical was not there most of the time. Maybe some other kind of drug, which maybe uh, was there for some time even. It was not a kind of sudden issue. Mm. But this curiosity development among people, young people and the parents and authorities, whoever. And at the end, what happened was uh, it negatively affected the children in the country. Right. The one reason is that, as I said, it develops unnecessary attention among them. They are so uh, uh, keen to watch the news that. And it gives wrong uh, facts and figures, uh, making a kind of uh, the use generalized sometime, like 20%, 30%, 50%. Students are using this in particular school or that particular area or in the universities, whatever. Those are wrong. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, ultimately what happened was that it gives a kind of idea that the whole country is under such a situation where most of or the majority of young people are into the drug which is not correct which is completely incorrect and the false facts and figures so uh, the negative impact was uh, it takes time to remove such wrong impressions from the young people's mind and at the same time even though you give correct facts and figures and now people doubt about it. Is that so? Because in that report it was like this, that particular report it was like that. And how can we believe? What is the correct situation? Mm -hmm. But fortunately, what I want to tell you today is that today, now we are talking after like few weeks. Now we can see that there is not, not much uh, different happened. Like there is no such a kind of uh, disaster happen in the country. Uh, but what happened was that, as I said, the unnecessary attention attraction uh, develop about the drug. There are two things about the drug as well as the drug user. Hmm. So uh, today we know uh, by statistics, Sri Lanka is a country where the tobacco is declining highly, like if you compare it with 80s and today. So the tobacco consumption has gone down 
almost to 50 percent. So that is proven by the statistics because the number of sticks manufacture going down by 50 percent. And from the other surveys, the consumption patterns, if you check, that has gone down. So you can see it in the kind of public areas, people rarely smoke today, which is true. That is one thing. And the other thing is uh, the heroin. We have been talking uh, about heroin since 1970s. So even heroin use is not rapidly increasing at the moment. It is maintaining the situation. So and alcohol, it's going up and down, fluctuate. If you can remember, every time that this kind of news come to the public and to the news agencies and the media and then after some, after some time it goes down. And if you really uh, observe in the future, you will see that after like six months time or more than that, the, another name will come. So this is also a kind of propaganda which the illegal drug dealers can't have a kind of ordinary promotive uh, promotional strategies. So they from time, some, from time to time use strategies like this, sometimes spreading false news and uh, getting the kind of attention and putting it to media because the media and general public are so sensitive to this. So they, knew, they know that very well. So that is why even you talk to Na National Dangerous Drug Control Board, the reported cases are there. When they check the kind of particular drug and the kind of usage, it is very, very low. The reality is low because that we also sometimes without knowing, trapped by those people who are strategically trying to promote this through the media. So that is what happened to ICE last two months mm. because uh, people, I mean, the trap to this kind of strategies. Everybody started talking about this. Do you think if they pay to such a kind of advertisement or kind of propaganda in the media, how much money they had to spend? They haven't spent a single cent today, but got the kind of attention to the particular drug and with young people. So it is spreading everywhere. So that is also a strategy used by the illegal drug users. Therefore, that is why we always say that we have to be very careful when you get a kind of information without clarifying, better not to put it into the media. Even to our personal uh, kind of FB post or WhatsApp or wherever. Sure. So, there is, uh, there is a danger of disinformation, misinformation being spread in Sri Lanka, especially uh, when we take the war uh, on drugs. Uh, I'd like to connect this to um, a more socio-political uh, issue as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if we take successive governments, it has been in uh, their political um, manifestos Manifesto. uh, to end the war on drugs. So this has been like a very um, clear slogan. Catchy slogan. Very catchy <laughs> slogan, exactly. <laughs> Um, so, this issue is also connected to the political uh, kind of mafia, uh, if I may use that word, as well. What are your thoughts on that? Is this a political issue? Of course, yes. It is. It is because in uh, two ways. One is that we know globally there are, there are treaties and kind of uh, laws and regulations to control the drugs in the global level, mm. in the UN level, United Nations. And we as a country, we have signed many. Yes. So, and we abide by those rules and regulations to control the particular uh, drugs coming into the country, trafficking, spreading and everything. So, it's a political issue, issue when it comes to supply of that mm. and and we as a country responsible even to the region sometime because 
our country, because of the strategic uh, location of the country, that geographically, mm. it so is a transit point. It's a transit mm. point. So other countries, the traffickers, the peddlers use our country, Sri Lanka, as a kind of transit point. So automatically, what happens is that when any country uh, face such a situation that some amount of drugs are coming to the local also. Yeah. So therefore, it's a political issue how best the particular government is controlling this yeah. and how best the police narcotic bureau and the customs and the other relevant authorities are working on it. So it's really a political issue. And from the other hand, uh, historically, culturally, uh, we are a kind of country where the majority of people are non-users, even today. Mm. Even today, the majority of the population, even after uh, about 18 years, they are non-users. Mm. So therefore, we have experienced lots of issues because of the colonial period, they introduced alcohol into the country. We had somewhat uh, alcohol culture, but it was not that harmful but during the colonial period it introduced as a kind of thing that everybody should do so it's a kind of thing that value in that particular uh, culture so then we experience the negative impact of it and therefore we as a country uh, the people are looking at how the consumption patterns are going up or it is going down and uh, we know the negative impact of all type of drug mm. use, all type of drug use, like tobacco, not only to the user, and there because of the passive smoking, it affects to the others also. Therefore, mm. as a kind of global measures, the tobacco has a kind of very good control measure. We call it framework convention on tobacco control. Mm. Because of that, the countries are uh, responsible to control tobacco starting from the growing. So it is happening now. Mm. And if you can remember, some time back, we did not have those uh, pictorial warnings in the packs. Now we have it. Yeah. And now we are uh, heading for a kind of, uh, we call it plain packaging, the different packagings. So that is because of all these kind of international type of regulations too. Mm. So what I want to tell you is that even people are thinking of what is happening to tobacco uh, consumption in the country. What about alcohol? Because alcohol causes lots of social issues. It is not like tobacco. Alcohol is a big issue when it comes to the families and the neighborhood. And uh, all these kind of uh, disputes and unnecessary type of fighting among gangs and the groups. So, the alcohol fuels that. Mm. So therefore, people are sensitive to these kind of things. And heroin, cannabis, uh, cocaine, hashish, or ice, that, that also people know by experience, like illegal alcohol and legal alcohol, somewhat political involvement are there. Because we know that these are kind of products which makes money. So, irrespective of the parties, the general public knows that the politicians who are involved in this kind of product, this kind of marketing, shares of the companies, or who is always trying to, you know, cover up the illegal alcohol issue in the country, or illegal drug issue in the country. So, it is very, very political. So, uh, I think some time back, even the tobacco control make a huge political uh, interest. Absolutely. Right? Which is good in that sense. So then the political leaders and politicians are pushed to do the correct thing. But there are things that which not really happened even this moment in the economic crisis. Mm. I think you also had a kind of dialogue uh, discussion about that. The tobacco tax has not been increased yet. Every tax has imposed to the correct level why not about tobacco tax? So it's a political issue. Yeah, right. and massive lobby groups. Massive lobby groups. Mm. So, and at the same time, the other angle also there, because uh, this, uh, today we call it addiction industry. 
addiction industry is legal and illegal both. Okay. So, I told you that the tobacco is declining. Then some people want to make a kind of claim that yes, yes, tobacco is declining, but the other, other drugs are increasing. Mm. Because the tobacco type of industry would like to show the people that even though the tobacco is declining, see, other drugs are increasing, which is not correct, scientifically not correct. And at the same time, uh, it is really uh, funny that uh, when we observe this kind of news these days and the YouTube channels and all, there was a program, it, it, it appears as protecting people from taking ice, okay. the particular drug we are, uh, people are talking today. And but in the right hand side, in the screen, the logo is the cannabis logo. So, the cannabis lobby is using this issue to tell that cannabis is okay, but ice is so dangerous, like that. So, in the addiction industry, they take the advantage among how these things are, you know, going up and down and fluctuating in the mm. particular country. So, we have to be very careful. It's very nuanced, right? Of course, yeah. yes. Mm. So we had to be very careful. Maybe sometimes people appeared as, you know, uh, they are on behalf of children to protect them or whatever. But at the same time, they are promoting something else. Right. So vested interest. Vested interest. So that is also, again, political. Right. In that sense. Sure. Um, the difference in the conversation we would have had um, a decade ago and now is that now we see in Sri Lanka uh, the introduction of party drugs, uh, psychotropic substances, methamphetamine, um, uh, etc. And this is a co very common feature in Colombo's nightlife in um, other areas of Sri Lanka as well. Uh, there are laws to deal with these uh, psychotropic substances as there are for the other drugs. However, when it comes to implementation, um, there are issues that are faced. How do you uh, view this aspect as someone who has been working in this industry for so long? Yeah. Uh, about this party type of drugs and the nightlife, nightlife and the nightclub type of drugs, it has been there for many years. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing we should understand is that those uh, specific type of drugs used for nightclubs or parties or whatever, for earning money, they don't want to make it cheap. They want to keep the level, the price of the particular drug to the level that they can earn money. Hmm. Money in the sense not like other goods, selling a small amount of and earning a huge amount of money. Yeah. So therefore, the one thing is that those type of drugs, they don't want to make it a kind of street type of drug. Right. So the exclusivity is maintained. They want to maintain that exclusive type of image of the particular hmm. drug. Otherwise, they can't sell it. So that is one thing. And the other thing is... When it comes to the control part of it, like, uh, as I said, there are laws and regulations coming from the international treaties which we have signed. And inside the country, we have many authorities. Uh, Police Narcotic Bureau is there. And when it comes to alcohol, National Authority on Tobacco and Alcohol, that mm -hmm. authority is there. To uh, prevent and control the things in the country that National Dangerous Drug Control Board is there. Mm. And customs are everywhere, things are coming and going out yeah. of the country. So, relatively as a country, we have very good laws. I would say uh, effective ones, mm -hmm. uh, most technically correct ones we have. And uh, implementation part, every country, there are issues. Mm. The problem is that this involves lots of money. And, and uh, we know that even the implementers of the law, the particular officers, human beings. So the traffickers knows 
uh, how to tackle this with the control authorities. So, they are very keen, vigilant, sensitive and they study even. They study who is the boss there, who is the authority, the chairman or whoever and what is happening in the ground level. So, every country, the drug trade, the traffickers, they always try trying their best to get friendly with those authorities and the people who are implementing the law. That is because they know that they are doing something illegal. And when something is illegal, when there are authorities to control it, automatically the kind of value of the particular product is always high. That, that you we can't mm -hmm. control. So therefore, as a country that our authorities are working to the maximal level they can. But at the same time, from time to time, as we heard, there are loopholes. And uh, there are things that reported which sometimes you can't believe. Like the particular authority or the particular officers who are responsible for controlling or raiding or uh, implementing the law even engage with such activities. That happens, that happens in the world. So only thing is that we have to be a country that to what level the corruption is happening. It is like any other areas, the corruption is there, but we have to be very careful to what level that is going to happen, what level it is happening at the moment. So uh, one good thing is that uh, we always heard that this much of kilos were raided, this much of kilos were uh, like, uh, you know, uh, caught up by the police or some other authorities. That is a kind of good sign that something is implementing. Mm. But when it comes to illegal products, which you can't measure is that if that much amount is now uh, with the police, how much amount actually released? That is very difficult to measure. But there we need a kind of community and the responsible citizens, everybody, because you can't control this through only the authorities. This is everybody's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Starting from the young children and the students up to the level of academics and the professionals, if everybody work, I mean like everybody uh, does the work according to as we call it the responsible way. So then there will be a kind of good control. In that sense, I think even with this many uh, news about ICE and other kind of drugs that Sri Lanka, uh, I think in a kind of better position today in comparison to other countries in the region. That's a good thing. Okay. And also, Mr. Samanasekara, the demonizing of an issue, that's something that uh, in Sri Lanka, we sort of grapple with, for example, instead of demonizing this drug menace, if we could instead um, educate the public on the effects of drugs, the ill effects, what will actually happen to you, what will happen to your family if you get uh, addicted to this? Um, and you categorize it and in a scientific manner disseminate this information to the public in all three languages. Isn't that a better way of going about it instead of scaring people, frightening people and creating so much of chaos? You step into a very important area when it comes to the demand reduction and okay. education about all type of drugs. Correct. Me to agree, as an experienced person in this field, by research and other kind of service, it has been proven that if you make anything like, if you are always talking about only the danger of it, maybe sometimes even ill effects only, and sometimes hazardous kind of effects to the society, and as you said, demonizing it and uh, like scary type of messages or whatever, unfortunately sometimes 
small group of people in the society attract to those kind of things. You know that there are some people that they would like to do dangerous things and to show that nothing happened to me. And some people, if others say that, oh, it's scary and you should not touch it, it's so dangerous, whatever, there is a group of people who would like to touch it and do it and say that nothing happened to me. Mm. So therefore, we always now say that talking too much about uh, demonizing, uh, talking about the dangerous effect of it uh, kind of things may not get the real results of it. So therefore, what you should do is that to tell the truth, as you said, tell the effects. And the other thing is, uh, you know that even the illegal drug industry or even the legal one sometimes like to have such an image to the drug. Mm. This is dangerous. Don't touch it. Right? Mm. Because they know that the, the, the young mentality always try to get the challenge yeah there's there's an aura of mystery about it. mystery about yeah. it and uh, they would like to take the challenge and they would like to tell others that because they the particular guy become a hero then so therefore what we should do is to open up the real issue and tell what is real in it if I give you an example that there are lots of myths and misconceptions around the effect of drug. Okay. Right? So, uh, some time back, I will tell you the kind of example that everybody uh, mostly uh, heard about, right? About heroin okay. many years back. Some media and some stories, teledrama, started talking about that. If you take the particular drug, you would like to see the blood completely rubbish right and sometimes say that you will see a kind of uh, different colorful worlds like illusions completely wrong this is because that unnecessarily people do not have much education and the knowledge about how to do the prevention part they are trying to do it, but they are doing more harm to the society than the good. Yeah. So therefore, today we are telling the truth about it to the young people and the children. There is nothing much to, you know, talk about it. It's just a drug. Mm. And even the young ones and the, anybody in the society can understand that those kind of effects are actually limited to the, that subculture. Right. It is not a common belief and it is not according to the science even. But they do it, they say it. And even some other people can just observe and understand what nonsense. It never happens. That, but they are just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Because they glamorize their own use. And unfortunately, uh, it happens to media also. I know that many print and the electronic media, even the social media believes that interviewing a person who had the experience is the best that is completely wrong because mm. it is like sonali if you interview a person who is really is care about ghost mm. and asking have you seen any ghost yes yes i have seen it was like this it was like that mm. because that is his own belief mm. it is not the real and the reality of mm. it so therefore Confessions of the drug users are not a kind of educational tool anyway because they always glamorize it, they always tell the positive side of it, they always tell that what made them to continuously use it. Right. And those are not the facts and figures found by the science and the scientist. It is different. It is because the particular user would like to generalize and they justify the usage of it. Right. And without knowing, without having any knowledge about the drug, the particular person may even writing it in a paper, like glamorizing it more and more. Mm. So the people who are reading it, yeah. getting a completely wrong picture. It's deeply problematic. Deeply problematic. Mm. Deeply mm. problematic. Okay, thanks very much. We're going for a short commercial break. We'll be right back.
محمد دین میں جلبیا پچیا کپڑے نبادی را میں کو مکینات کر رہا تھا کہ لافیا نے لیکن ادھر تک میں اتما کیر ہو رہا میں دن میں نارا توٹو پڑھو وال وال بے دیلا ایک ارے منسو دن نارا نیت گیو وال لولا واتو رہو دی میں 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 بپٹے ایک ایک دی پی اکنا سہنا میں تین سیدھ دن میں بڑھا کیلا مومنا کیا نے میں گم میں دن ہوتا ہے نا گم میں For the people, by the people. Bedrock में देखा था माय ये लड़ी ना आदरे सिनेहास। बंचा करुँगा पीटर नाटक के लिए, नमूद बंचा आटा हसुए नहीं, मैं दीजिए ना कुछ भी। उनको इन प्रोजेक्ट पर तो देखा हमारे को समाज आरक्षण बात तक गया हुआ। तो बोलते हैं आप भी क्या मिला कर लेने? दलित तो तलव साहा ताल्लुक साहित दारु। ने प्रतिकार असिरिमत नत्तिल विनुएन राजुगिरिय श्री हरुदिय देवस्तानें पिवत्तु Hearts in Harmony विसी हतरदा रात्री नवे आइती हेट टीवी वन तुले Do you think there is a deep misunderstanding of the people's distress? These are things that are organized by the government, that the president had gone and uh, participated in that event. The bishops' conference uh, agreed that we are not going to take part in any state Christmas festivals this year. This time we thought that uh, due to this uh, serious situation of our people, we cannot uh, attend state functions because the state itself is in question. A Newsline Christmas special at 8.20 p.m. this Friday on TV1. ராத்ரி <laughs> Welcome back. We're in conversation with Mr. Pubudu Sumanasekara, the Executive Director of the Alcohol and Drug Information Center. We're discussing uh, the nuances the implications of cracking down on the war on drugs, the problems associated with sensationalizing uh, of this issue. Um, Mrs. Sumana Sekara, let's talk about uh, the psychology behind uh, this. Most people take drugs because they want to escape from their reality. Um, drugs are a form of escapism. Um, this is a deeply socio-economic issue um, at every level. Mm -hmm. Sri Lanka lacks uh, sufficient psychosocial care. Mental health uh, care in Sri Lanka is at an abysmal level. The budgetary allocation for mental health is at an abysmal level. So given these issues, what, what are we telling people to do? Yes, um, countries like us, as you said, uh, if you don't have much resources to reach everybody in the society, in every strata of the society, and uh, many age uh, levels and all. So what is working in the world today is we call it the whole of society approach. Okay. Uh, and as you said, that the psychology behind this is, so, is also very, very important. Uh, as I uh, slightly touch in the beginning, the image of the drug and the image of the drug user is very important as because that is the thing that sometimes uh, 
uh, develop curiosity among young people to initiate the particular use. Right. So therefore, today we know that uh, the illegal, legal, both drug industries, they want to make this kind of drug use is a kind of macho and the kind of rebellious and uh, sometimes cool, whatever thing. But what is behind is that the most of the drugs used in the world commonly are not pleasant chemicals. Those are painful and those are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that even our viewers can identify any particular drug use, even the alcohol use after drinking alcohol is in a kind of very discomfort mode. So nobody want to make an effort and spending money and come to such a level. Yeah. Just like heroin and cannabis and ice, whoever, whatever the drug. Mm. So that is the reality behind this. But we should be able to develop a kind of society bit critically think of this and to understand that this is a trade. They have their own marketing system. So we don't need to trap by those things. Yeah. And especially young people should understand that these are kind of uh, marketing uh, strategies or the kind of gimmicks they use to get attracted uh, young people into the habit. And the other thing is that if I give you a very a few uh, examples like uh, some people believe that, as you said, so it helps me to escape from the problems I face today. Mm. So if I if I use drugs, so I won't feel anything like that, which is completely wrong because we have seen many who even after taking the particular drug, preaching and talking and crying about their issues. So it, it never escape you from the kind of issues that or the problems that you are facing today. So it's only again a kind of image that build up around the drugs. And the other thing is like that uh, some people believe that so under the influence of the particular drug you are in a kind of nice, pleasant, relaxed mood which is not. So even at that particular time that people are suffering and they, they tell the truth when they come to counseling, they actually start talking about, yes, I got it and I feel like this, feel like that, all the, all the positive side of it. But if you dig into the experience, they say that, yes, it was so horrible. I feel so bad. I vomited. So I couldn't bear it. So I told my friend, I can't take it. That's the truth. But in common, they don't talk about this. It is just like alcohol you know alcohol is a depressant if you take alcohol that you feel really uh, kind of tired so after drinking alcohol you can't sing songs or dance because there is no such chemical in alcohol has properties which make you happy or fun but it is all the kind of we call it psychologically today the kind of learned effects from the society the chemical effect is different but the social beliefs is different. So therefore, we need to give a kind of support to people to understand the difference between those two things. So that will be very good and it must come to a kind of dialogue in the daily life and questioning the effect of it. Uh, we're on to our last final mm -hmm. uh, minutes. Um, I'd like to ask you, since um, curbing the war on drugs is a social responsibility and not just the responsibility of the state. Um, what is the particular role of parents in guiding children, um, role of teachers and educators, uh, and the role of intellectuals? Um, let's talk a bit about these stakeholders. Yeah, this is very important because all over the world, through last many years' experience, everybody understood that this is a kind of issue that everybody has a kind of responsibility depending on the role and the age and whatever the position is. So therefore, the one big thing is that we should understand whatever the legal or illegal drug, the producers just manufacture it. The promotion and the kind of spreading happen through social media and traditional media both. So the media also has a very responsible role 
of the talking and the kind of uh, discussing about the issue. Like if I give an example that the tobacco and the alcohol promotion start from grade, not grade, year 3 because the cartoons have some characters with smoking and alcohol scene. And when, it, when they grow older, the films and the other kind of magazines, whatever, everywhere, there are some kind of promotion. So, the media has a big role to play here. How are they going to talk about this? And the other thing is, as you said, that the professionals and academics must come out with a kind of cost-effective, innovative approaches for the prevention for the particular country because you can't have a kind of, you know, one mm. particular system for the whole world yeah. because the situation, the environments are different. So, therefore, depending on the resources we have, the academics, professionals should come up with the kind of innovative, practical system to deal with it. And at the same time, we need a kind of research. It's a kind of costly subject, but we need research to understand the reality of it. And the teachers and parents also have a very big role. Uh, what I would like to tell you here, uh, here is that there are some parents, if they are a bit suspect about their children's uh, 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 behaviors, they are sometimes hiding it, mm. which, you, which you shouldn't do that. So, you have to open up with the kind of issue, the son or the daughter, that what is happening and uh, developing a kind of dialogue with them, open up with them to the issues. So, because parents can't act as police people. So then it will like it's a kind of headache for young people. Mm. So the dialogue and the support what you have to provide. And at the same time, uh, we should immunize young people in the country to work against this kind of things happening in the country. I know that lots of young people in this country are now fortunately working toward prevention of alcohol, tobacco and other drugs. Right. So then there are people get a kind of immunity to understand what is happening. So, their role is to protect the least informed, insecure, weak person among the friends. Because we now know by experience that weak personalities, insecure personalities in the society, they are much more vulnerable to these kind of things. Mm. So, therefore, the young people also should start working. And in my language, I always say that the young people should show the traffickers or the dealers or the companies that they are young enough to deal with it and they like to challenge what they are doing. Mm. So, and uh, for the uh, kind of country, I think the Ministry of Education, the health, media and, uh, you know, the public security, everybody has a role to play. And if we play that role, so then we can be a kind of in a better position. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Pubudu Sumanasekra. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the People's Platform. We'll see you again on Monday with the Singhala edition of the show. Have a safe weekend. Good night.